Hi guys, this is Rio from Personos, and today I want to show you the note effects of Studio One Professional, which can be used in incredibly creative ways and also enable a couple of workflows you might not expect. So let's check it out. Node effects are real-time effects that alter incoming node data before it reaches your virtual instrument or external media device. There are four node effects available in Studio One Professional. The arpeggiator, the chorder, the repeater, which are most useful for creative adaptation of node data, and the input filter, which is more of an utility processor that limits the node output to a selected node range or a specific range of velocities. You can drag and drop these node effects directly from the instrument browser onto any instrument track, or you can add them from the node effects section inside of the track inspector. And once you've added one or more node effects processes to any of the instrument tracks, you can quickly access them by clicking on the node effects editor button here. You can also access them directly by double clicking on one of the node effects inside of the track inspector. You can save and load node effect settings as presets, just like you can with any other instrument or effect. Now there's two ways to print the node effects data onto the instrument track. First, you could set the input mode to active. This is when you click on this little pre-fader icon here so that the button lights up yellow and then hit record. What happens then is that all of the generated notes that are being translated from the ones you're actually playing are being printed directly onto the instrument track. The second method would be to select the track and navigate to Event Render Instrument Tracks. Or you can also right click the desired parts inside of the track itself and then choose Instrument Parts Render Instrument Tracks from there. OK, with that out of the way, let's look at the arpeggiator first. The arpeggiator turns chords as well as single notes into arpeggios, meaning rhythmic cycles of single notes derived from the notes that are currently held. Like the arpeggiator functions that you find on many synthesizers, this creates repeating pattern of notes that can travel upwards, downwards, up and down, down and up, or in a randomized pattern. You can also use the arpeggiator to play repeated patterns of whole chords, or note patterns that follow the order in which the notes have been played, as well as note lengths and velocities you have set in an arpeggio pattern. This is very much like the sequencer function that you find in many synthesizers as well, and it opens up so many creative possibilities for awesome bass lines and much more. The chorder is an intelligent chord generator that lets you trigger chords by playing single notes. And you can specify intervals in the chords manually, or you can choose a single chord shape to play across multiple keys. You also have control over the area of the keyboard that triggers these chords, letting you, for example, trigger chords in the upper part of the keyboard while playing single note bass parts in the lower half. Like this. The chorda is divided into two dedicated rows. The lower row with that piano roll here lets you pre-audition the chords when you click a note. And once you've selected a note trigger, then the upper row displays the notes that are currently assigned to this trigger note. So let's take a quick look at how you can create your very own chord shapes like this. Press the Learn button on the chorda to put it into Learn mode. Then select the keyboard key for chord assignment so that it turns orange. And then start building the chord shape of your choice by selecting notes in the upper row of keys with the mouse or by playing notes on a connected MIDI controller. Once you're done, press Learn mode again to disengage and begin playing. The repeater works just like it sounds. It creates rhythmic repetitions of the notes that you're playing. These repetitions can be pretty sophisticated though, because there's multiple parameters to have individual velocity and pitch curves, for instance. There's also a sync button, which is great to have a rhythmic arpeggio sort of that syncs to the song tempo. As you can see, you can use the arpeggiator, the chorda, the repeater, and the input filter for many different applications, and I can only encourage you to try them out. Thank you for watching.